Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So this is Roy Sagular from the research department. And I'm here to discuss to you what happened last May. And this is the, our monthly uh, market wrap up. So let's go. Okay. So first we'll discuss what happened for the month of May. It was, it was, an, it was a, uh, an eventful, it was full of events and it actually closed at a pretty interesting note. And I will tell you why later. And then we'll discuss what to watch out for in 2020, the last month of the second, the first quarter, the last month of the first half of the year, and then our stock picks. Okay, so what happened in May 2020? Okay, so actually that's wrong. Actually in May 2020, the PSEI went up. It went up by 138 points or 2.4% uh, and closed at 5,838.84. But year to date, that's correct. The PSEI is down by 1,976.42 or down by 25%. So what dragged the market? So of course, now we could have been up consistently for the month of May, but these are the reasons why we are not that rebounding compared to our peers. So I'd just like to note, you know, you saw year to date, we're down by 25.3%. Keep in mind that that's one of the lowest among other indices in the global so what drag the market so of course there are u.s china tensions specifically in the first the first weeks of um in the first weeks of the month you 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 were seeing u.s blaming china regarding the virus and they some some countries like europe say the continent europe saying uh, that the china should pay for the damages and the like so that brought some tensions globally. Second is the recent one, Hong Kong mainland China conflict. I will I actually have a slide dedicated just to explain um the root of the Hong Kong mainland China conflict. But that drug the market, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you a brief history about that later. Another one is we saw local economic data. We saw actual GDP came in at point negative 0.2 percent compared to expectations of around 2%. And for CASI GDP, so recall in the earlier part of the pandemic, our government was saying uh, at, na at least flat yung growth ng Philippines. But now given more data came in, more uh, more analysis, they revised it downwards to negative 2 to negative 3.4%. And then of course, OF remittances, in Feb alone, Feb, wala pang masyadong crisis, but it was already lower than expected. So, of course, in, in regarding unemployment, uh, government saying that it could actually go as high as 10%. So there. And effect of the MSA rebalancing. So that, that actually goes two ways. Um, in the earlier part of the month, the MSA rebalancing was negative to us because we were downweighted. And, act, and active funds reacted to it earlier. Why the MSA rebalancing was actually the reason, partly the reason why we went up earlier. So we'll tell you that in the next segment, but I will first discuss the Hong Kong mainland China conflict. So here's a brief history, right? So we'll just discuss this very quick. So of course, before Hong Kong was under the British colonial rule, colonial rule until 1997, when, its sovereignty was passed on to China, right? And it, this came into agreement called the Basic Law, where Hong Kong actually has this own political, legal, economic system until 2047. But earlier 2000, there was this uh, movement where China was actually trying to enact um, this more control in Hong Kong. But it resulted actually to more protests, which made the bill um, not to be talked about for uh, quite some time. But recently, right, this new national security provisions would be added to the basic law. So, of course, not China really wants to consolidate its government power. That's one side, China. But the other side is, last week, Hong Kong's government actually signaled support for the legislature and said it would cooperate with China to enforce laws in Hong Kong. So, of course, much to the displease of its citizens, hence, the one we're seeing now, the Hong Kong mainland China conflict. So I, if I were to actually revise my title, it's Hong Kong citizens mainland China conflict. 
keep in mind that Hong Kong's government actually supported this. So that's the big problem. Okay. So of course, what made the market? What supported the market? What made the market go uh, so again, no, the PSEI went up by 130 points this month. Just some clarification. Okay, so the first week, we saw some easing regulation concerns. Recall that Duterte said, apologize to the Ayala and Pangilinan. So that actually supported market sentiment because keep in mind, earlier part of this year in January, we, the market, the local market was behind global markets already, mainly because of regulation concerns. And because of uh, our president saying uh, sorry to the concession, it's actually brought positive sentiment for quite for a while. Next is okay. Hold on. Okay. Next is of course. Okay, so next is the gradual opening of the global economy. Of course, recently diba, we were now, the, the NCR was downgraded to ECQ, uh, to GCQ, right? So that actually supported market sentiment, partly being the reason why we were up earlier. That's, that's the reason why we were somewhat, we were about 1% up earlier. But keep in mind, we were up 4% earlier that's why i would also attribute what made the market go up is because of the also of the msa rebalancing so keep in mind i just like to have a brief explanation it, the msa rebalancing dragged the market earlier this month because the active funds meaning the funds that can those are the ones that um can trade in or out without any without tracking anything the active funds goal is to outperform the index, meaning they're not tracking an index. The, their funds are composed of stocks of their own choice. So what they did when they saw the likes of Security Bank being removed from the MSI index, they immediately removed it from their portfolio, right? So it actually also brought negative sentiment throughout since May 13. So Given the effectivity of the MSA rebalancing on the close of May 29, which is today, what the active funds did was they bought up the cheap stocks that were initially sold down, and that resulted to a huge volume. If you, keep, if you saw the volume earlier, it was around 20 billion. That happens only if there's, that usually happens, and one of the reasons is MSA rebalancing, right? So two reasons, partly the the GCQ, the, open, the gradual opening in the local economy, plus the effect of the MSA rebalancing. So that supported the market today. Okay. Another is there, there were these economic recovery plans. And I will tell you that in the next slide also. And there were positive results from this experimental drug by Moderna Inc. So I will tell you a couple of bills. We call this the potential game changers. And I will mention two. These are the government bills in the Philippines. So first one is to create corporate recovery tax incentives for enterprise tax. So bottom line, this lowers the corporate income tax from currently 30% to 25% as early as this year. The target is July 2020. Keep in mind before, this was called CITIRA. The target was to lower the corporate income tax by 1% per year. Given the pandemic, they, they revised this corporate tax, income tax law or act. And the, the goal is to actually lower it immediately to 25%. So after that, they will now lower it to 20% by as early as 2029. This is a potential game changer, mainly because this will actually help companies already ASAP as soon as possible right so you will help of course we've been seeing a lots of bills the social amelioration program that 
that is actually helping the household. This one, this act helps the corporate. So you'll see both help to household, to corporate. This is good. This is a potential game changer for us. And there. So just like to go back to the second bullet, they will be given incentives for existing businesses, right? To, to the next four to nine years. So good for the private sector. Next is the Balik Provincia Pagasa program. So bottom line, the government agencies will realign their budget to expanding outside of the Metro Manila. Right? We are a Manila-centric economy. Bulk of the GDP comes from Metro Manila. And this Balik Provincia program, of course, given the Manila-centric economy, there are lots of people here. And that's actually been proven to be a disadvantage health-wise since bulk of the people are here. So what they're doing is expanding the budget outside of Manila, hence Balik Provincia. So they're actually enticing people to go back to their hometown and work there. And these are the incentives. So support to the SMS, MSMEs, right? Development of infrastructure and the like. So these are potential game changers. So what do you watch out for in the month of June? So the effect of transition of lower quarantine measures in NCR in other places. So right now, the highest quarantine measure is in Cebu. They're still in MECQ. So of course, no, why do I say what to watch out for? Because we, the question here is, will there be a second wave or will there be higher cases in this first wave we are at? Or will there be a second wave of economic growth, economic resumption? So that's what we are waiting for. What should we should watch out for. Next, approval of government bills. Create. Keep in mind that these bills mentioned are targeted to be approved by next week. Since the, gov since the Congress will be on recess from June 5, I believe, to until end of July. So should this be approved by next week, this is a big catalyst for the market. This is a huge reason why we can be at par share price performance-wise with our peers. Because right now, we're at the lower end, eh, share price performance-wise. Next is the progress on experimental antiviral drugs. Of course, if we see some more, if we see more positive results in the COVID-19, that, that will also help support sentiment here. And here, uh, some economic data. So some manufacturing data on Monday, inflation on June 5, job support on in the US. This, the, the job support that is going to be released next Friday is deemed to be the worst ever job support in the history of the US. But you see, you see US actually rallying, rallying already, right? Because this, they say this already priced in. And keep in mind, bulk of the Central Bank Monetary Board meetings are this month. So the US on June 11, Europe next Thursday, and for the Philippines on June 25. And one last bullet, the ongoing Hong Kong-China context. I put this on the last one because later there will be a, there will be a press conference uh, conducted by Trump. So, you will see later why, for those who missed the rally earlier, this may be the reason why the market could pull back and could provide us opportunity to enter. So watch out. This will be, I believe this will be later, Trump's China press conference. Will there be more sanctions? Because here's the thing. In the Hong Kong-China conflict, this could be disadvantageous to Hong Kong significantly because there could be capital flight, meaning Keep in mind that Hong Kong has a special trading agreement with U.S., meaning whatever U.S. is imposing on China is not imposed on Hong Kong. But given this lessening autonomy of Hong Kong to China, will there be, will there be also sanctions in, or will there be uh, trade issues with Hong Kong as well? So that, that's the thing we should watch out for. That's a risk, right? And these are all happening in Asia, right? We can't afford this anymore in terms of sentiment wise, but here we are. And here's here's the thing that we should continue to watch out for. 
Okay, so again, no, on the DOH, of course, we, we may we might see higher cases, and we just like to put it put this out there that the DOH is saying that we do we should expect higher or at least elevated cases in the next few days because there is a backlog in validation of cases, right? And as the government continues to conduct more testation, right? So just a heads up. Okay, so now moving on to technical analysis. So we've been trading within the 5.354 and the 5.8 range for quite some time. And now we broke out. We broke out of this range today at significant volume, of course, attributable to the MSR rebalancing. And it's now actually trading above its 50-day moving average, right? You can see here at the breakout, you see pataas na volume, right? Increasing volume, and that's good. That actually, that actually um, is a good um, confirmation. But keep in mind, of course, MSA rebalancing is a unique event in the market. You see significantly higher prices, and usually, usually, after an after a huge price action, via because of MSA rebalancing, the week after, what will happen is there will be normalization of prices. For example. If prices significantly went up today, which it did, you will see some normalization of prices in the week after, meaning prices will somewhat pull back. Prior to this, when MSA rebalancing resulted to a significant um, correction in the market, what will happen the week after is a slight rebound. So expect for those that missed out on the rally, on the breakout, you have a chance to buy next week. But of course, the caveat here is the market should stay above 5754. So actually those more conservative, you still have time. You can actually buy when it breaks above the recent high of 5946. So you have time to buy. I mean there's still a long way to go, right? So again, no, if if it if just in case the press conference later is a significant negative sent brings negative sentiment. You should lighten position should the PSI return below 5.7 and 5.4. So that's those are the scenarios we should be looking at. It it is this is a welcoming price action, but we should still watch out for um, the news. We should still watch out for the price action. So this the couple of months we've talked about rising wedge, the triangle. Now we'll we'll be talking about breakdown and breakouts of recent index names. So in the, just in case, just to bring some examples, there's a point here uh, at the end of this part, right? So first, we'll see some breakdown, the likes of DMC. You see, saw a breakdown on huge volume. For Jollibee, of course, Jollibee because of um, bad earnings, also a breakdown. For Semerado, also a breakdown. For GTCAP, also a breakdown. And also for security back. So the, the a question here, I, be, I also I already saw a question regarding security bank. Just to bring it back on why did it pull back prior to this? It was removed from this MSA index. MSCI is a global benchmark, meaning some funds are pegged, some funds are tracking the MSCI index. So if security bank in the recently MSA rebalancing, it was removed from the MSCI index, it is actually downgraded to just a small cap index in MSCI. So what happened was, if I track the MSCI standard index and security bank was removed, if I'm a fund manager, what I will do is I will remove security bank, meaning I will sell security bank. And that's what happened last May 13. And what happened earlier was some funds that are trying to catch up sold down security bank again. That's why it went as high as 88, close at 81. And luckily for the viewers here, I will tell you that there is an opportunity for security bank in the weeks to come. Right? It was held back on this recent rally because of the MSA rebalancing. But keep in mind, security bank is still a robust bank, same as others. And you have opportunity to buy the stock. So we actually have a buy call here in the traders playbook so you should check that out 
So here are the, on the other hand, the price resilient heavyweight. So earlier, you can see a significant breakout from SM with huge volume, right? So also from Ayala Corp, a breakout, price resilient heavyweight. And you'll see here, BDO, after initially breaking down, it went back above its, went, above, went back within its range on strong volume. SM Prime price resilient still trading within its range and same with Ayala Land. And keep in mind, I gave you five examples of stocks that broke down and five examples of stocks that actually broke out and are, are price resilient. The question here is, why did the PSEI break out? Should it be just continue trading the range since some stocks are breaking down, some stocks are breaking out only? But the fun fact here is, you should get out the weights of the PSEI to know which ones are the re are the heavyweights amongst the index names. So keep in mind that SM, SMPH, BDO, Asian, Ayala Land account for 50% of PSEI's free float market cap. Right? These are the heavyweights among the heavyweights. And you will see this in our platform. So there. So moving on to our stock picks. So sector picks remain to be consumer. So keep in mind, there, there is actually a new risk in the consumer sector. So besides inventory problems, which are probably easing right now because of the slight gradual of the gradual opening of the economy, another risk is the imposition of excise taxes on junk food, ranging from 10 to 20%. Keep in mind the notion why they're trying to impose excise taxes uh, is to make up for the lost revenue from the government, right? So, which are these junk foods? So, it includes fast food restaurants, such sold um, junk food sold by fast food, like burger, fries, fried chicken, hot dog, pasta, and also some salty snacks, some sugary desserts, and carbonated beverages. That is a sector risk. Should it be implemented? So, nevertheless, here are our buy pick. So, URC remains to be our pick. So bottom line, why? We see this uh, as one of the more resilient names. And we see the domestic segment, the snack segment, um, the Jack and Jill, the, the, the C2, right? Will bring sales or will, yes, will bring sales um, up for the year. And this will offset actually the lower contribution from the weakness in its international business. So there. Another is Robinson's Retail. Robinson's Retail is actually one of the outperformers in, its, in the recent earnings results. And why? It's mainly because of its performance in the Rustans business, which, actually, which, which was actually a drag last year. right? So this year, it, it significantly outperformed. It's, it came back from being a net loss company and now is a profitable company. So besides that, Robinson's Retail has long been known as to operate as some of its segments are actually a need as an essential, operating as essentials. So as of first quarter, the supermarket, the drugstore, the convenience stores account for 77% of the retailer's revenues. So there. And so there's both one of the resilient companies, both earnings-wise and share price-wise, and mainly because all of its store segments can operate. That's the bottom line. So Pure Gold has, Pure Gold has proven that it can actually be a resilient company despite the pandemic, despite any crisis. And that's, that's why we like Pure Gold as well. Besides that, Pure Gold caters to the ones who can afford. So the low income target market, right? So, Another sector pick of us is the banks. So of course, no, this is a risk for them specifically slower economic growth. So slower spending, slower fee income from credit cards, right? And the tendency of some small medium enterprises to actually default on their loans is a risk to the banks as well. So, so banks has been known to be one of the laggard sectors in this recent rally of the PSCI. So keep in mind, there is a huge potential upside from the banking sector. So what we like in the banking sector is BDO. Price action, I've showed you earlier, uh, quite some rebound. 
So keep in mind that despite falling interest rate environment, we do see some robust expansion in its credit business. So we do expect, bottom line, we do expect BDO to be one of the more resilient banks. So keep in mind. So we have a huge upside for this. So as for our research partner, DBS, they're also positive on Metrobank. Same with BDO. Despite lower, interest, despite lower interest rate environment, this should outperform moving forward. Mainly because it's this bank that, that has um, bullet in this kind of pandemic. So, yeah. Another sector pick of our risk is the property sector. Property sector, same with the banks, are, is one of the sectors that are lagging. So you have time to buy this. So Rob is done for patient, one of our stock picks. Because keep in mind, why we like the property sector, specifically the ones we are going to mention, is because after this pandemic, the risks are namely regulatory risk for the water concessionaires, another regulatory risk for the FOBOs, and uh, our recommendations here are less exposed to that sector, one of which is RLC. So despite that, we do see a huge bump on its earnings at the latter part of the year, mainly because of recommendation of earnings from its business in Chengdu, that's in China. So keep in mind, China is already the one that is recovering as, as we speak. So good bump for our RLC for the rest of the year. Next is SM Prime Holdings. So keep in mind, our initial price target for this is 46. Now it's 42. It's still a buy for us. So keep in mind that SM Prime Holdings, like its parent SM, has this robust, resilient business Now, if the gradual, the gradual opening of the economy now, they will immediately benefit from it. So the new normal may be, may be a bit of a disadvantage to them in terms of comparing what they earned before compared to now. But bottom line, they're still a leader. And if and what we learn in the market, if you want to buy something, it's the leader, right? So that that's what SMPH is. And besides that, we're also pricing in this passive reclamation project. So this is a long-term play that you should really buy every time it pulls back. Short-term price action still consolidating, so you have time to accumulate before it goes up. So there. Another is Ayala Land. So Ayala Land, if SMPH, if SMPH unique catalyst is the reclamation project, Ayala Land's unique catalyst is the REITs. So they've been continually positive on listing the REIT company. And we're also um, quite positive on that. So besides that, Ayala Land is actually a, a defensive play. Of course, if you're worried on the mall, on the mall, on the new normal, Ayala Land has less exposure to that. So it has more exposure in the domestic luxury residential segment. So keep in mind, these are the ones that are, the buyers of the domestic luxury residential segment are the ones that are more, less affected in this crisis. So there. Next is SM. SM, the significant outperformer today. Why? Again. It's a leader, it has a strong balance sheet, meaning it can donate, it can waive rent, but bottom line, it has headroom, it has this leeway to actually do this, do so because it has a strong balance sheet and it can it can recoup those losses moving forward. And it's it's continually continually earning at this kind of environment. So there. And I would like to focus on the second reason, it has low exposure. To highly regulated industries it doesn't have significant exposure to the likes of mining it, it, it only has a small exposure it doesn't have a significantly exposed exposure to gaming and the like so bottom line it has significant exposure in three main things property banking and retail very robust very essential businesses so there so just like to mention the rest two other sectors so I so I revised some of this given the recent news, recent development. So for power, there is to power still no lower power demand, specifically in, 
in industrial commercial sectors, some people are saying maybe power is a good hedge because we're using power in our homes. But keep in mind, these power companies also cater to businesses, to industrial commercial sectors, that, and those account for two-thirds of power demand. So it's a big effect to them as also. And to consumer restaurants, to consumer discretionary, to restaurants, weak demand due to new normal, of course, even in GCQ, I believe it's not allowed. Dine-in operations are still not allowed, if not mistaken. And also, the imposition of excise tax on junk food, of course, junk food under that is burgers, hot dogs, and the like. So it also affects the restaurants that are selling that. As for the construction, specifically the cement sector, construction activity will likely be challenged post-ECQ because it's already rainy season. The peak of construction activity is second quarter of the year, the April until June. So also lower all demand. You saw PCOR's earnings, they book a net loss also shell because besides of lower all demand, keep in mind that they're actually keeping oil as storage and that oil storage has value and if oil prices significantly goes down the value of those oil storage known as inventory also deteriorates the value so there another is gaming of course for the obvious reasons lower revenues from both gaming and non-gaming segments in the new normal scenario so there you know here's our trailer's playbook for those that are um first time viewers or those who haven't seen traders playbook this uh, this is our most active report in our website so of course what we provide here are short term buy short term sell calls of course we recognize that this kind of environment is it's hard to earn from index names alone right so this is a way for us to earn in this kind of environment so what does Traders Playbook have? So it will tell you what happened. So what happened was the news, change in valuation, earnings news. Our view will tell you what, what do we think, bottom line, in just one paragraph. And then our recommendation. So this is what's unique in the Traders Playbook will tell you when to enter, when to exit, and when to cut loss just in case price action doesn't go our way. And then in the second page, you will see technical analysis and peer comparison. So one example of which is FGen, which we recommended as early as April and rallied 14% this week alone. So there, you'll see why we like FGen in our Traders Playbook in our website. So another example, we don't only buy calls, we also provide light end position or sell calls. So as early as March 9, actually as early as last year, we've never issued a job, we've never issued a buy call in Jollibee because you'll see the ones that are highlighted here. We see high degree of uncertainty in JFC's 2020 earnings outlook, and that came into play early this week. So, there. And this is the performance of Taylor's paper. We're quite proud of this because if you should have bought, if you would have bought our calls since the start of the year. You would have actually earned 4% compared to PSI's performance of negative 25%. So it's safe to say Traders Playbook is a um, resilient report as well. Mainly because we provide strict cut loss points here, right? And we provide a leeway when to take profit. So there, despite more stocks that are that are, that are actually cut loss. The average year to date performance is still positive because we provide good risk management in our system in our, in our traders' playbook. So tell this to your friends to invest and invest long term, invest in this kind of calls provided in our report. Okay, if you have any further questions, please let us know. And if you have any suggestions in the topics you would like us to talk about in the Spotify podcast, please let us know also. So thank you. Enjoy next month. Hope you stay safe in this GCQ environment and keep, keep looking at our reports. See you next month.